The child, the child that you call me to be. Let's go. Come on, everybody, let's all clap our hands. Always gonna have a heart after him. Come on, everybody, let's all clap our hands. Always gonna have a heart after him. Let's bear fruit. That's what we're gonna do. Let's bear fruit. continuing to talk tonight about bearing fruit. And there's some things that we need to get rid of. How many of y'all can think of a couple things in your closet right now that you need to get rid of? Brandon, what's one thing in your closet that you need to get rid of? Old clothes. So why do you need to get rid of them? Because I am like, I'm too big for them. You're too big for them. You grew out of them, so they're still too small. Yeah, that's great. Zay, what about you? What is something that you need to get rid of? Some shoes. Some shoes. Why? Because they don't fit me no more. They don't even fit you anymore. Yep, that's useless to have a pair of shoes in your closet. Well, they fit me the other day, and now they don't fit Oh, yeah, it like that. Creedlin, what about you, baby? Um, something you need to get rid of. Bows. Bows? Why? Because <laughs> they don't... They don't match anymore. They don't match anymore. You had to get rid of those clothes, so now you got get, got to get rid of the bows. Sasha? A really cute pair of jeans that I really like. A really cute pair of jeans of that you like, but... I have to get, I'll give them to someone. I don't know who. You have to give them away. Why are you getting rid of them? They're too small. They're too small. You're growing, right? You've, like, grown how many inches this know. year? Like, three inches. Sierra, what about you? Empty shoe boxes. Empty shoe boxes. Why? they're just stacked up. They're just stacked up. You don't put the shoes in them, right? No. I don't use shoe boxes. Pastor Charity uses shoe boxes. All of her shoes are in shoe boxes. She's so organized. Me, not so much. Truly, they're in the closet, though. They are where they're supposed to go. Hello. Um, what do you need to get rid of, True? Um, what's it called? Um, I don't know. You're telling the story. <laughs> All my broken Crocs. Oh, your broken Crocs. Yeah, throw those away. Get rid of them. Tra Thomas? I know what you need to get rid of, little farts. No. Oh. Thomas? Um, my, my baseball shoes. Oh, why? They don't fit me. They don't fit you anymore? Some shoes of mine. Some other shoes, they don't fit anymore? Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Keyword Thomas. Willow? We'll come to this side next. Um, what do you need to get rid of? Old stuffed animals that, mm. that I keep in bean bags that I don't really use at all. Yeah, some little kid might want to play with them yeah. if they're not all dirty and gross, right? Yeah. All right, Titan. Sorry, Zay, Jocelyn. I got three things. Okay. Um, uh, so the dreams that I really, really like, but that I, that I always wear, but they too, they're too small. <laughs> Like every time I wear them, um, they show my underwear, and my mom says, "My mom says your underwear's showing." I'm like, and I still wear the jeans. Oh my god! Because I really like them. And then, um, <laughs> get rid of them, buddy. And then, um, Ain't nobody wants to see your chonies. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then some shorts that are really small on me. Dang, Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Okay, we gotta get rid of those short and then, shorts. Um, uh, um, 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 a shirt. A shirt that's too small. Yeah. So you got short shirt. shorts and a crop top. Tiny. <laughs> you need to get rid of these clothes. Okay. This is not right. This is not right. Xavian. Zer. Zer. Zerian. What's his name? Zebulon. Zebulon. Uh, Zeppelin. What? Zeppelin. 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 Led Zeppelin. Those Led little trainers don't fit me. Oh, good. Some what that don't fit you? Those little chonies. Chonies? <laughs> Get rid of those chonies that don't fit you, little boy. Is there? Uh, one of my toy boxes because I have two. Oh, yeah, so you need to get rid of the other one. Yeah, one's like a like normal toy box. Yeah. And the next one's like safe like a football. Oh, that's cool. So I'm cool. getting rid of the smaller one, which is a football. Cool. Great. Get rid of it, buddy. All right, Pilar. Y'all got a lot of stuff to get rid of. Spring cleaning. All of your shoes. All of your shoes? No. 
old shoes. Old shoes. They don't fit anymore? Is that what you're saying? No, the one that, I'm wearing these. The but, old shoes. Oh, so you need to get rid of your? Old shoes. Old shoes, because they don't fit? <laughs> yeah. They have holes and stuff. Oh, they have holes and stuff, yeah. So you need to get rid of them. Yeah, that's good. Carson, what? Uh, what do you need to get rid of? Uh, you had your hand up, bro. I was <laughs> Weird stretch with one arm. Go to Ellis. What do you need to get rid of? Shoes, shoes, toys, stuffed animals. Oh wow, you got a list. Um, some clothes. You need to get rid of it. Yeah. Y'all, and soon we're gonna have this thing here at church. What's it called? Uh, 45. 45 Center, where if you have stuff that doesn't fit you anymore that still looks good, like it's not like, the, Pilar, you can't bring your holy shoes, and Zeppelin, you can't bring your chonies, okay? Nobody wants those. But if you have, you can bring your, your crop top and your short shorts, that's fine. Because there might be a smaller kid that they don't look like crop top. But you can bring your stuff, and we're going to hang it up, and whoever comes to church after church, they can go to the 45 Center and get what they need if they need clothes. So you can sew into somebody that doesn't have. So maybe you should put all that stuff, if it's still good, in a bag because we're going to be having the 45 Center soon. So put it in a bag. Don't throw it away and tell your parents we're saving it for the 45 Center. Because you can what? The, it's the scripture. That all in Acts, <laughs> I think it's Acts 4, 5. All right, we're going to get some more. Acts 4, 5, I think. Or 40, verse 5. Maybe it's 40. Acts, is there an Acts 40? Acts 2, 45. Acts 2, 45. Thank you, Jaslyn. Jaslyn knows all things. Acts 2, 45. Look what it says. And... S- Okay, I'm going to read it. Hold your horses. Y'all need to get rid of y'all's talking. Just kidding. (laughs) And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. So just like in the book of Acts, the very first church, they did that. Guess what? We're going to do it too. So if you have old stuff, put it in a bag. But there's some things that like you need to get rid of. They don't fit anymore. Well, spiritually, there's some things that you need to get rid of. And just like we started talking about on Sunday, there's some rotten fruit that should not be a part of your life. And if you see rotten fruit being produced in your life, you can't act like it's not there. Do you understand? If you are producing, if a tree is producing rotten fruit, can you just pick it off and act like nothing? What's going to happen the next season? It's going to come back, back, right? There's something going on on the inside that is causing this fruit to be rotten. If there is rotten fruit in my life, it's a result of something that's going on on the inside. And look what Colossians 1.10 says. Go there quick in your Bible. Who can get there first? Tyne got there first. Get him uh, Cheez-Its because we can't be having all kinds of candy and then. Colossians 1.10. Look what it says. That ye might, Paul was talking. He said that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being what? Fruitful. We are called to be fruitful. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. When God created man and woman, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, what does that mean just have a bunch of kids? No. If, if you ask God, God, do I need to have kids? Then you need to have kids. I would ask God first. When you get older, just check with him first. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you might not want to mess with kids. You know what I'm saying? But if he wants you to have a kid, then guess what? You have a kid. And will he tell you to have a kid outside of marriage? No. No. He'll say, get married and then have a kid, right? So anyways, we're called to be fruitful. That's not just having kids. That's producing good fruit in our life. Good fruit is refreshing. Have y'all ever bit into a juicy apple? And it was just like good. Like when you bite into an apple and it just like squirts everywhere and it's just like good. Or just like a really good banana. Like not one that's like green, you know, like super hard. Not one that's brown, but one that's just perfect. Oh, a peach, Noah. Mm, A juicy peach 
right? What is it? It's just like refreshing. It's just good. Well, do you know that your life should be that way? But in order for your life to be refreshing, like your teachers at school should not dread when you're at school. They shouldn't say, I don't know. Your family should not dread whenever you wake up in the morning. I don't know. Sierra's awake. No, you should be refreshing. Your life, whenever people, whenever you go to recess, people shouldn't be like, oh my gosh, here comes. No, your life should be refreshing. Your life should leave people better. Well, if I have rotten fruit, am I going to leave people's lives better? No, it's not going to be any good. So let's look at the rotten fruit that we want to get rid of. Say, I'm getting rid of that. Just like you know, there's some things in your closet, some things in your room, like a little football toy test and then a big toy test. You need to get rid of some dirty chonies. Ooh, if you keep dirty chonies, they got Skip Thomas. <laughs> if your underwear have brown streaks, it's time to, are you ready? Yeah. Let it go, let it go. Take those underwear and throw them away. Actually burn them. You know what I mean? Just say, hey, it's kind of it's kind of cold outside. Let's have a bonfire, mom and dad. And then go in your room and dig through your underwear drawer and any underwear that have brown streaks. Make a off of them. Grab them, yes, and say, here lies. They're getting cremated. Poo-poo chonies. Say goodbye, poo poo chonies, and throw them in the fire, and then let it burn. Let it burn and let it go. Let it burn and let it go. Whichever one, Adele, Elsa, whichever you're feeling, you're just gonna do it, okay? Isn't that Adele? Um, there's a fire. <laughs> okay, Galatians 5. We're gonna let that burn. Everyone say, I gotta let that go. Well, the Bible tells us some things that we got to let go. And I don't just say, okay, I'm letting that go, that bad attitude, that not putting God first, that jealousy, I'm letting that go, period. Okay, God, I surrender it to you. There's got to be something done on the inside. Where does fruit come from? From the what? The root. The root. The root. The Before that came the seed. The seed. So I got to dig down and find out. What is going on that's producing this rotten fruit? Maybe I just haven't stewarded the word. Or maybe I've been filling up the ground with, remember the, the soils that were bad? I've been filling up the ground with distractions, with being half in, half out. I've been filling up the ground with pride. And so these things are going to cause me to produce these rotten fruits and say, I got to get rid of that. I say, I got to get rid of that. So first I have to say, okay, this is rotten, and then I have to find out where's it coming from. First I have to say, this is rotten, and then I have to say, where's it coming from? Because I can't just be this believer that knows something is bad, but don't make a change. Because what happens is, if I know something's bad, then in certain environments, when I'm around Pastor Kathy... When I'm, when I'm around a certain teacher that I really like, then I won't allow those things to be seen. But then when I go home and my mom tells me no, then it's going to be seen. See, I'll just fake it. I become, starts with an R, ends with a religious. I become religious. I become fake. I become an actor. And just like Pastor Danny always says, you don't want to be an actor, you want to be a factor. Right? You want to actually do something in your life that makes an impact on the kingdom of darkness, right? Rips people out of hell and into heaven. Well, what's that going to require? You have to steward the word and produce good fruit. So there's some rotten fruit that we have to get rid of. So first, I have to know what that rotten fruit is. And then what? I have to know where it came from. What is it? And where did it come from? What is it? And? Where did it come from? <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. Okay, 19 through 20. Here it is. What is the rotten fruit? 19 through 20. The works of the flesh. Who got there first? I don't remember. We'll just do it again afterwards. There's other scriptures. Works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? 
adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before as I have told you in the past, they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If I don't get rid of these things, I will not walk in the kingdom of God. Now, in the Bible, there's, there's written kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. If I, if I participate in these things, does that mean I'm going straight to hell? No, but I won't walk in heaven on earth. And so the kingdom of God, me walking in all that God has for me, is on the line right now. If I don't get rid of the rotten fruit, first I have to know what? What is the fruit? And then... Where did it come from? So we're going to look at some of these, obviously not all of them because there's a lot, but we're going to look at some of these. What? So what is the rotten fruit? First of all, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Idolatry. That's what we'll look at first. Remember it said idolatry. I believe it was in verse 20. That was the first one it said. Works of the flesh are idolatry. Listen to the definition of idolatry. It's excessive attachment to something. Excessive attachment to something. Now, who should we be attached to? God. We should be attached to God. But when something else in my life I'm attached to excessively, if there's something in my life that I'm attached to more than God, then what is that called? Idolatry. Idolatry. That's putting something above God. If I'm willing to do everything, every activity, every conversation, every video game, and not read my Bible every day, what do I have in my life? I have idolatry. I have idols in my life. I've made something else bigger and more important than my relationship with God. And is anything more important than your relationship with God? No. So if I see this in my life, and you can even think and ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything that I put above God? Maybe it's someone else's opinion. You put that above God. Well, then what? guess what? You've made them your idol. You know, like American Idol, yeah. you know, like the music, you know, like, oh, you're my idol. You're my idol. Oh, my gosh. LeBron James is my idol, right? No, guess who should be, who should be the number one spot in our life? God, Jesus, right? Time with him. That's who should be number one. But the world, what do they want? They say, oh, well, pay attention to this. Do this. Oh, this can be your idol. Or this can be your idol. This can be your idol. No, I'm not going to have idolatry in my life because whenever I do that, what is that? That's rotten fruit. So where does that come from? Where does the fruit of idolatry come from? Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7. Who can get there? Do we have more Cheez-Its or candy or something? Or were the caramel apples? We can do the Who got there first? Ellis got there first. Are you there? Nope. Still pages are turning. Sasha. Sasha will get a caramel apple sucker or something. Look what it says. Read it on the screen if you're not there. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If there's idolatry in my life, any of these rotten fruits, it goes back to what? As I, what does it say? For as he thinks. If I have rotten fruit in my life, it goes back to how I think. So what would I be thinking if idolatry is coming out of my life? If things are more important to me than God, I see this in my life. I see me pushing God to the side. Oh, there's a movie on tonight? Okay, then I'm not going to go to church. Oh, I've got this going on? Okay, then I'm not going to read my Bible. Oh, I've got this happening? I'm not going to read my Bible. If I see that fruit in my life, is it because my schedule is busy? No. No, any rotten fruit comes from where? Your heart. It comes from my heart, my thoughts, what I've been thinking. If I'm thinking wrong, my life will be wrong, as a man thinks. So I want you to think of one thing that would produce this rotten fruit of idolatry. Idolatry. What is the wrong thought? Noah? Not coming to church. Not coming to church? But what would I think about church? If I don't come to church because I've got other stuff going on, what is the thought that I have embraced? Zoe? Um, church. Um, church doesn't matter to me that much. Church doesn't matter to me that much, right? 
It's just something to do, which goes against Hebrews 11.25, right? Who can get there first? That is it, but I want you to get there first. Hebrews 11.25. Titan got there first. Titan, can you have a sucker? Yeah, we'll get you some other little... No. Well, you read it to me. Hebrews 11.25, read it. I lost my page. I lost my page. Get there. See, I have to realize, rotten fruit doesn't come from situations. Say, rotten fruit doesn't come from situations. Where does rotten fruit come from in my life? It comes from me. Do you know what I mean? It comes from me. How many of y'all have ever farted and you blamed it on the dog? But who did that fart come from? That smell came from you. If we played back the tape and we got one of those, um, you know, those, those things that you can see body heat. I don't for, know for sure what they are. But it's like you can sense the body heat. It's like, what is it? Infrared. If we went back, we like rewound the tape. Okay, like old school. We rewound the tape. And we put, we like bounced in. We went to the past and bounced in. And it's you and your family and your dog and you have a couple friends over. And then we turn on the infrared. And everyone's just eating their popcorn fine. And then we see this poof. This little poof of like red heat coming from your butt up around the couch. And the dog's sitting right there too. But you could tell it came from right there. And then we see you say, oh, the dog farter. We'd be able to go back and say, oh. That came from you. I can't blame my parents. I can't blame situations for the fruit that I'm producing. Because guess what? The fruit I'm producing is a result of my thoughts. Can I go in and change what Ryan is thinking? No. I can't do it. I can say all the good things about Ryan in the world. But that won't change the way she sees her. She has to change her thinking. That's why I can't detach myself from the fruit of my life. If there's idolatry in my life, if I'm putting things above others, then that's a result of my thinking. So just like she said, well, church isn't that important to me. I've put other things above church. Well, what does the Bible say? Mine's 22. That's fine. Read it up, buttercup. So so let's do it full of belief, confident that we're... Presentable inside and out. Mm-hmm. Let's keep a firm grip on on the promises mm-hmm. that keep us going. He always keeps his worth. Let's let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do not some do but Spurring each other on, especially as we, as we see the big day approaching. Okay, so what did he say? He said, don't stop getting together and worshiping, right? Yeah. Church, and so much more. Yeah. Did you hear that? So, y'all, Jesus is coming back soon. Yeah. Like, we are seeing Bible prophecies happen before our eyes. Okay, Jesus is coming soon. So if Jesus is coming soon, and the scripture says, don't stop getting together and worshiping so that you can spur each other on. Have you ever seen those cowboys that like they have the spurs? What are those for? (laughs) To kick that horse, right? Why? Whenever they get that horse, it's not harmful. The horse doesn't cry. The horse knows when you hit me there, I'm going to go. Okay, it's not harmful to the horse. Horses were made for people. Okay, people weren't made for horses. Okay, so they put on their spurs, they kick them, and then what does that horse do? Full force run, right? That's why we hang out together. But see, whenever I have the wrong thinking about coming together, well, it's just a waste of time or it's not that important. When I have the wrong thinking, then what am I automatically going to produce in my life? Rotten fruit, which is idolatry, putting something above God. See, if I have rotten fruit, it's a result of what? My thinking. If I have rotten fruit in my life, is it my parents' fault? Is it my friend's fault? Is it my schedule? I'm just so bad. No, whose fault is it? It's mine. And I have to, I have to take care of my thoughts. Y'all, if you don't get your thoughts in line, your life will constantly produce rotten fruit. 
You can be in church until you're 70, 100 years old. That's old. Have y'all ever heard of 70, 100? <laughs> That's 7,000. <laughs> you can be in church forever. You can come every time the doors are open. But if you don't change your thinking, you'll continue to produce rotten fruit, bad fruit. So idolatry. If you have idolatry, what do you need to do? Get rid of it. So what do I have to do? I have to identify where's the thought. What is the thought? Well, playing the video game or doing this is more important than praying in the Holy Spirit. Well, I just don't feel anything when I pray in tongues, or I just don't feel anything when I worship. I have to go to the Word and find out. What does Matthew 6.33 say? Who can get there? Matthew 6.33, who can get there? Who can get there? Who can get there? there? Zaylin got there first. Zaylin, read it fast. If I don't change my thinking, I'll produce rotten. Read it, Zay. But seek first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. But what? But seek, but seek first the kingdom of God. So whatever thought I have about that activity, about that video game, I have to grab that thought, get rid of it, and embrace the word of God. My thoughts have to line up with the word. And if they don't, what am I always going to produce? Rotten fruit. And y'all, rotten fruit... If I produce rotten fruit, what does it say? I will not walk in the kingdom of God. I can't produce rotten fruit and expect a peace-filled life, a joy-filled life. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. I can't expect to walk in something that I'm not producing. God gave it to me, but I have to steward it, and that means I have to steward my thoughts. Where does rotten fruit come from? No, my thoughts. Wrong thinking. Rotten fruit comes from wrong thinking. Rotten fruit comes from wrong wrong thinking. So I have to ask myself, what am I thinking right now? Because there's idolatry. There's like, I'm like skipping church. I'm skipping out on my quiet time. I'm treating that casually. I'm skipping out on time just listening to God. I'm skipping out on worship time. I'm casual during praise. Something must be more important. Where did that come from? Well, it didn't come because my schedule. It didn't come because I don't feel good. Where did it come from? My thoughts. If my thinking's wrong, my fruit will be wrong. So let's look at another one really quick. We'll look at these next two. They go together. Okay, let's go in our Bibles to James 4. James 4. Verse 1. Who got there first, Ryan? I think Ryan did. It was right. These two go together. Okay, this is anger and strife. If I see anger in my life, is that because my sister's annoying? If rotten fruit is in my life, what is that a result of? What I think. think. Because, y'all, when you think in line with the word, you cannot say, I cannot. You cannot produce rotten fruit. It's impossible. The word produces life. The flesh produces death. So as a believer, I'm called to produce good fruit. My life is supposed to be refreshing to people around me. My life is supposed to be refreshing to me. How many of y'all have just been like, you know, just like, you know, there's fruit that's rotten and it's just like, you're just like mad at yourself. You're angry. You're not happy. Right. Have you ever been there? That's not how God intended for us to be. We should be refreshing to others and refreshing to our own selves. Right. So look what it says. This is this next part of Galatians five. Let me read it to you one more time. You don't have to get there. Stay in James. So we know which ones are, we talked about idolatry and now we're talking about Wrath and strife. Wrath and strife. Anger. Wrath is outbursts of anger and strife. Look what it says in James 4, 1 through 2. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? What does it say? This is another verse. Remember, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Rotten fruit comes from my thoughts. Again, we see here, where does it come from? Do they not come from what? Your, your, your parents because they told you no? Your desires, your desires for pleasure. Your friends because they did something to talk about you behind your back. No. Your, your, your brother because they came no. in your room. No. Y'all, you can't blame other people for your anger. 
You can't blame other people because you're in strife. You have to look at yourself. Because, y'all, when they were about to throw Jesus over a cliff, okay, they pushed him out to the edge of the city, and they were going to throw him off. He didn't yell in anger. He didn't try to defend himself and get in strife. The Bible says he walked right through them. Why? Because he was thinking right. When you're thinking in line with the word of God, which is the love of God, which is the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, then guess what? You don't get angry. People may say some hurtful things to you, but you decide, what am I going to think on? I'm going to think on what the word says. And then you won't have this rotten fruit. Rotten fruit comes from where? It says it comes from the members on the inside. You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Outbursts of anger and strife come from expectations that aren't met. Whenever I have anger and strife, that's being seen in my life. And you can ask people. Ask them, hey, do I come off as like angry? Do I come off as someone that's always in strife? Ask him. Because if you do, then what do you need to do? What do you have to change? Your thinking. You have to change the thinking. It starts in here. If you're angry, is it your brother or sister's fault? If you're angry, is it your parents' fault? If you're in strife, is it because of your sister? No. Whose fault is it? It's mine. It's my thinking. When a sister comes in, a sibling comes in, and they're trying to pick a fight or they're trying to say something to you, if you are thinking in line with the word of God, that God is love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't suffer, doesn't hold wrongs against other people. Love, love does the right thing. When you're thinking that, do you mouth off to them? No. Do you get in a fight with them? No. Do you know you can't argue with someone that's not talking? I can go off on Bella. And Bella, and this, 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 and this. And if Bella doesn't say anything, what, what am I going to, I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out of stuff to say, right? Isn't that what Jesus did? He just said his preaching, and then they're all talking mess, and he just walks right through them. And guess what? They were like, oh, well, hmm. We don't have anything else to say, right? But if Bella tries to defend herself, tries to mouth off, tries to one-up, well, you're mom, well, you're this, well, you're that, then what does that create? Now we're fighting. If Bella punches me in the face and I don't punch her back, then guess what happens? The fight's over. You punch me in the face and I don't punch you back, the fight's over. Right? I'm not getting in strife. Why? Because what happens? I'm thinking right. When you're thinking right, you don't produce anger and strife. So I want us to look one more. One more verse. Psalms 33. Who can get there first? We'll talk about these other two. Psalms 33. Where does, where does, I didn't see. Who? Ellis. Psalms 33, verse 20. Will you read it for me, Ellis? Verse 20, 21 and 22. Our soul waits for the Lord. Our soul waits for who? The Lord. The Lord. Go on. He is our hope and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him mm -hmm. because we have trusted in his holy name. Mm -hmm. Let your let your mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us just as a, just as we hope in you. As we hope in who? You. In him. Say my hopes in him. See, whenever you hope in him or expect in him, well, I just expect my sister to be nice to me. Okay, well, she might not. Have you ever been rude to your sibling? Yes. Well, I just expect for my teacher to like, do, I just expect, I just expect, I just expect. What did that scripture say? What did David say? I expect God to do what he said he's going to do, and he always comes through. So when your expectation is in God, then whenever someone tries to get in strife with you or someone does something that you're like, oh, that just pushes my buttons, oh, that gets on my nerves, stop saying that yeah. because stuff is going to keep getting on your nerves. Do you understand? Yeah. What do you say? God, my expectation is in you. So I don't get angry. Yeah. I don't get in strife. Why? Because I'm thinking about him. When you think about him, when your thinking, thinking's right, your fruit will be right. Why would you have anger? Because of what? Expectations are wrong. My thinking's wrong. 
Just like, you know, have you ever, when I was little, I've, I've done this before, so I'll just use myself as an example. Um, I had an expectation that I was going to get to stay the night with Heather. She was going to stay the night with me, I don't remember. And so I asked, I asked my dad, and he said no. And so I got mad. Well, I had an expectation that he was going to say yes. And so guess what? My thoughts produced. I kicked a hole in the wall. Anger, right? And what? And I got my foot stuck in my tennis shoe. And I got a whooping, right? Now, I could have just gone to my room, just enjoyed the rest of my evening, just got over it. You know what I mean? But now I'm getting disciplined. I'm getting grounded. All because what? Because my dad said no. It's my dad's fault. No, it's my fault. I was thinking my expectation is in this. Instead of just thinking, God, my expectation is in you. And because my expectation is in you, I'm going to honor you. And the word says to honor my father and mother. Children, obey your parents. And so when I'm thinking about him, I'm thinking about his word. Then whenever my parents say, no, I can't do something. Or whenever, you know, I, I, I mess up or whatever, I don't get angry. My expectation is in him. I produce good fruit. But if there's anger and strife... What do I have to look at? I have to look at my thoughts. Y'all, people can hold themselves away. They can remove themselves from all people in the, in the hopes of never getting angry and never getting in strife. But who will they probably get angry with if they're all by themselves? They'll just get angry with themselves. They'll get in strife with themselves, and then they'll turn into a real weirdo. Well, I told you to do this. Well, I told you to do that. Right? Then they'll start arguing with themselves. Cuckoo. Right? Then they turn crazy. Right? It comes from inside. This isn't people. Say, people are my problem. If I'm producing rotten fruit, I have to look at what? My thoughts. If I'm producing rotten fruit, what do I have to look at? If I'm producing rotten fruit, what do I have to look at? My thoughts. So I want you to address, ask the Holy Spirit, is there any idolatry? Is there any anger? Is there any strife? And this is what the Holy Spirit's going to do. He's going to show you what it is, and then he'll show you where it came from. Well, this thought. You keep thinking that your sister should treat you like this, and she's not. That's the thought that you've embraced. So you have to take that thought and replace it with the word. My hope is in him.